In this tutorial, we're going to walk through a very pragmatic but time-saving use of the layout shape, which we put to work on a project involving outputting multiple versions of the same creative in different languages. So we've got a fictional advert for an app set up here, and just for some context, I've already rigged it up so that by scrubbing the offset in the render manager here, you can see that the creative changes. And you'll notice that as part of that, the call to action down here is also updating via a string array so that we can load in several different languages. Now, this array could of course be swapped out for data from a CSV file or Google Sheet if you preferred. So the problem we faced here was that some of the App Store badges vary in width. If I preview the badges in Finder, notice how when I toggle between the Spanish and French version of the badges, the width is changing. And this was causing us problems when trying to keep these two elements center aligned and maintain the gap between them as each language changed. So to fix this, let's start by setting up our badges to dynamically update for each language. So first I'm going to right click and disconnect the file that's already connected. And then by right clicking on the file attribute again, we can replace that with an asset array. Just select add array and then asset array. So now we just need to load up the array with the badges. And then for this example, we need three rows in the array. We've already got one, so let's add two more by clicking the add button twice. Now let's drag the badges from the asset window into each of the rows. It's important that the order matches the order that we have used for the call to action. So that was English, Spanish, and then French. So now let's just repeat that process with the Google Play badges. So we're gonna disconnect the file, add the asset array, add the rows, and then drop in the files. Let's now connect the dynamic index in the render manager to the index attribute of each of these arrays so that when we scrub the offset, you can see the badge updates. As we get to the French one, you can see the problem we faced. Because its width has changed, the gap has now changed and the two of them are no longer perfectly center aligned. So let's fix this with the layout shape, which is a very simple setup. I'm just going to select both badges and then in the viewport, if we right click, we can select embed in horizontal layout. And this will create a layout shape and connect the two badges to it. And as you can see, the two badges are left aligned by default, but we can change that by adding some spaces. Under layout items, let's click the add spacer button twice. This will add two spaces to the scene. Now, these are not visible, but what a spacer does is fill any unused space within the layout. So if we leave one as the first item in the list and drag the other one to be the last, you can see that they fill the space either side of the badges, leaving the two of them in the center of the composition. So let's just move this back down into position. And then now when we update the dynamic index offset in the render manager to preview the results, you can see that when we get to the wider French App Store badge, the layout updates to accommodate the change without affecting the spacing and maintaining the alignment. So there you go, a very simple but practical use case for the layout shape, which can be particularly useful when working with automated templates.